Okay, good morning, everyone. Oh, I did. Uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do now, or today, we're going to go through more circle. And before going through more circle, I just want to recap what we did for the last three or four lectures so that you are not lost in this process. So we went through how can we get the stresses in X and Y at any point within a beam. But the problem was when we design on the X and Y element or in the X and Y stresses, we figure out that the X and Y are gonna be safe because we designed on them. But when we apply any type of stresses, for example, in this beam, we apply bending or shear, whatever, we're gonna find that the crack happened in, in, in a certain angle. It didn't happen in X and Y, which tells us that at some, at some angle here, there is an element we didn't consider. That's why this element broke in a different angle than X and Y. So we went through, okay, we wanted to find this, um, this stress that will give me, or we want to find a stress at any given angle theta. And what we basically did, we cut in the element like this, and we went by, we, 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 we Okay, quiet. Okay. So we had X and Y, and we cut in the element, so we have sigma n and tau at any theta. And to find the equation for sigma n and tau, and this sigma is a stress at any given theta here, we did a simple math, which is like a resolution in the n and t direction, and we came, we came up with this equation, which is sigma n, which is a stress at any location or at any rotation theta. And we also came up with the tau. And we wanted to have this equation a little bit compacted. That's why we converted it in terms of two theta. But that doesn't mean that sigma n, that this equation, will give me a different answer than that equation. Both of them will give me the same answer. With any given theta, we can find the stresses. After that, using those equations, which is sigma n and tau n, an application for this, I ask you, okay, I do have an element. What are the stresses that will result if I rotate this element with a certain degree theta, 58, for example? And this is what we did, I think, in topic 17, this example. And we came up with this element. And then yesterday, or two days ago in the lecture, we became interested in the maximum stresses. So this example was at certain theta. But this example here, what we did last time, which is find the principal stresses and maximum implant stresses, we, we found that theta p and theta s, which each of them will give me the maximum stresses, whether in the normal or in the shear. So this, what we're going to do today is simply a method or another method to doing this. So Mohr circle is another method. So we already did what the Mohr circle is going to do, which is Mohr circle going to tell us what is the stresses at any given theta, which is which you you all can do it with those two equations, and also Mohr circle going to tell me what is the maximum stresses, whether it's principal or shear, which is which which you all you all practiced yesterday using the derivation of those equations, and then we came with some shortcuts just to be able to find the principal and shear. So more, the results of more circle is not new. I'm sure that you can find the principal stresses or the stresses at any rotation. It is just another method, which is a graphical method that you can visualize what all the possible stresses that can, that can arise with different theta or rotations. So basically, the, the more circle started with having the sigma n equation, which is the basic equation for everything. And the reason why I'm going to show you this slide or this page, that the derivation of more circle 
was in terms of 2 theta. So you're going to see here 2 theta. That's why when we draw more circle later, every theta in the circle is going to be in terms of 2 theta. So if I rotated theta, for example, in real life, in more circle, that's 2 theta. So basically having the sigma n, this is the sigma n equation. And then I took this guy and put it in the other side. And I came up with this equation. Sigma n minus sigma x plus y over 2 equal that. I'm going to call this one. And for the tau nt equation, it's going to be the same. So what basically happened, I'm taking the square of this side, which is square of this. And I'm going to add it to the sigma nt. And I'm going to square it as well. If you did so, if you added this term square plus that term square, you will end up with this equation. And this equation is basically the Mohr circle equation. If you don't see it, I'm going to explain it in a moment. But this equation is a circle. So if you don't remember it, let me remind you what was the equation for the circle was. If I have a circle, the center of that circle was 0, 0 and the axes of this, this circle is x and y, the equation for this circle is x minus 0 square plus y minus 0 square equal to r square. So the radius is r, which basically it is x square plus y square equal to r square. That's when the circle is centered at 0, 0. But what if the circle has a center at 3 and 4? What you're going to do, you're going to say x minus 3 square. And the 3 is positive here. That's why we need to put it x minus 3 here. Plus y minus 4 square. And the radius is 2. So I'm going to say 2 square. OK? More circle basically going to be this similar to that one. But it's not shifted up or down. It's going to be on the x-axis. And it's going to be in this form. So whether the circle is going to be here or it's going to be here. But it is centered at the x-axis. So there is no shift in the y. So if there is no shift in the y, the equation for the cir this circle is going to be x minus a square minus y square is equal to r square. So notice the shift in the x here. That is a. And this a is here. So with this preparation, let me put this equation now in front of you. Tell me. You are right. This should be plus. Thank you. Good catch. Good catch. OK. Let me put this equation now in front of you. And let me explain why this is a circle. So this guy, sigma x plus sigma y over 2, we agreed yesterday this was sigma average. And since it's in the first term, that's actually, if I want to copy this guy here, this is actually x minus a, which is now sigma minus the sigma average. So the sigma average here is, is my a, which is the shift in the x. So I'm going to call sigma average here equal to a. OK? Then I have tau nt squared which is y square here. And then I have this term, and this term is r square. So if this term is r square, and I want to find the radius now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the square root of this guy, which is sigma x minus sigma y over 2 square plus sigma xy square. Before continuing, what does this equation ring a bell? What was that equation? That's the tau. That's correct. Tau max. So I'm going to call this tau max equation. And tau max was, was from yesterday. That's the in -plane, maximum in-plane shear stress. Because I didn't introduce yet the maximum for the out, both out of plane and in plane. Because there is planes I didn't consider yet. What we are doing now is just plane stresses. I didn't show you any cubes from from earlier this week or last week, you didn't see any cube. It's just basically an element that's x and y. So 
Now, we have sigma minus a. So since I didn't write x minus a, I, I wrote sigma. So my horizontal axis now is going to be sigma. The vertical axis, which was y in the general circle, now is going to be tau. So I'm going, gonna ha I'm going to have a graph of sigma and tau. But let me put this here as a reminder. Sigma and tau graph, the angles here is based on 2 theta. Because the equations that we derived this circle was in terms of 2 theta. Okay? Let me continue by saying now this circle, this Mohr circle, is shifted by A, which is sigma average. Okay? If I know sigma average, the location of the circle, and if I know the radius, which is, for example, if I, if I put this, because from the center to any point at the perimeter, that's the radius, and I know the radius here, so given the radius and given the center, will I be able to draw the more circle or no? So the center here of the circle, that is basically A and 0. And A, as I established earlier, this A is sigma average. So whenever you see A, that's the sigma average. So given the center and given the radius, will you be able to draw the circle? OK. Before continuing, I want to update an equation, which is sigma p1. Yesterday, we said sigma p1 is sigma average plus tau. And sigma p2 was sigma average minus tau. What I'm proposing now, I'm going to say, instead of average and tau, I'm going to say a plus r and a minus r. Ask me. Do you all agree or no? Sigma average was a. That's, that, that's what we established now. And tau max, that's the radius, right? That's my sister. Never mind. Uh, let me put this. Do not disturb. OK. Sigma average plus tau max, it's a plus r. And then sigma average minus tau max, that's a minus r. And sigma p1 and sigma p2, as we agreed yesterday, those are the maximum stresses that are going to happen. If more circle is going to represent stresses, then at the end here, which is a plus r, which is a plus r here, this point is going to be sigma p1. Do you all see it? And if I said a minus r, which is I'm going to a, then I'm going back by r, that's sigma p2. OK? So let me continue now by saying, OK, now this is more circle. And I know the center. I know everything. Anything that's going to be in the positive stress, which is the positive x-axis now, that's going to be tensile normal stress. Anything that's going to be here, that is compressive normal stress. By saying anything that can be here, it's just moving the circle that way, if the circle was drawn that way. So what is that circle? Any point in the circle represents a combination of sigma and tau. So any point on the circle, that's all the sigma and tau that's going to happen when I rotate the element. 360 degrees, that's all the stresses that are going to happen. So each point here represents a plane. And as a reminder, I introduced this plane idea by saying if I have an xy and I want to find a stress at this plane, what would you do? You will go at this plane. When I ask you what is the stress at that plane, I want to find the sigma n that's coming out of that plane and the shear that's coming out that's parallel to that plane. And this plane is going to have a theta, which is basically 
this is the rotated element for that plane. So for all possible planes that gonna happen, you're gonna have a point on the circle that represents that plane. Okay? If the points, for example, if any point was in here, in this side, for example, that falls in the tensile normal stress region. So any point here, that means the plane at that point feels tensile normal stress. If a point is here, then that this point feels compressive normal stress. So what I introduce now is the sigma normal and compressive. What I'm going to introduce also now is what is the tau. So the tau, there is a lot of ways to draw the Mohr circle. But this method, and if you took Mohr circle before, you can do it your way. But the way that I'm introducing here, that I'm not going to say positive or negative tau. And instead, I'm going to say clockwise tau and counterclockwise tau. So any point above this, the normal above, above the x-axis, for example, that is sigma, and then this tau is clockwise tau. So I'm not going to write positive or negative. I'm going to write a number. The next way that's clockwise. So the reason why I put it up because the y-axis up here that's that's um, clockwise. At the bottom here, if I do have a tau, this tau is counterclockwise. Is that clear? So there is no positive or negative, and it's kind of weird, but trust me, this is way easy to understand. And if you already took more circle before, you can do it your way. I don't have any problem. Okay? So this is the general idea of more circle. So let's go through solving a problem just to see how everything works together. So the same The same question that I asked you early this week and last week, I do have this element. No, that, that, that was like yesterday's question. I do have this element. I gave you the x and y. And I asked you, determine the principal stresses and maximum in-plane shear stresses. And after that, draw the stresses in an appropriate sketch. OK? What you basically do, and I want you to do this for both today's example and also yesterday's example, I want you at the beginning, write what was sigma x equal, sigma y equal, and tau x y equal. So that I don't want you to look at the problem anymore, like the, the figure anymore. Because most of you forget, forget the sign. So sigma x here is 9 ksi. Sigma y is minus 5 ksi. And tau x y was negative x, negative 6 ksi. Okay. This is not new. So I want you to start by saying, OK, now I want to find the center of the Mohr circle, which is A. And A was sigma average, which is sigma x plus sigma y over 2. So you have 9 minus 5 over 2. And this was equal to 2 ksi. So now I figure out where is the center of the circle. So the C, which is the center of the circle, it is 2 and 0. And the reason why it's 0, because the circle is not shifted in the Y. It is shifted in the X. So that's the first thing. Second thing, I want to find the radius of the circle. And the radius of the circle was tau max, which is the maximum in-plane shear stress, which is sigma X minus sigma Y over 2 square plus tau xy square and this gonna be mine nine plus five over two square plus six square and this you're gonna get 9.22 ksi so now i know the radius of the circle U using both of them i can i can establish the circle already but just for additional details, I'm going to continue getting that P1 and P2. But you'll see that if I have a radius and I do have an A, the center, 
using your compass, if you are doing it manually, you can adjust your compass at the, cent at the A and then open it until the radius and just draw the circle. And that's your Mohr circle. But just for further details, I want to continue by saying, okay, sigma P1, what was sigma P1? It was A plus radius, right? So A was 2, radius was 9.22, so now I do have 11.22 KSI. And this point was the furthest right point in the circle, and this is the sigma P1 point, and it's going to be 11.22 and 0. Okay? Same thing with sigma P2. I'm going to say A minus R, 2 minus 9.22, and I'm going to get negative 7.22 KSI, and I do have now sigma P2 point, which is the furthest left point, that's going to be 7.22 and 0. At this point, now I'm sure where the boundaries of that point, and it, it's important to calculate this just to know in your engineering paper what is my, my bound what is the boundary of the circle so that you can establish your scale in x and y. Finally, I want to find something we call the reference point. And the reference point is the x and y points. Because again, I want to rotate the stress element based on what? Based on the x and y. Because theta is the angle from the x. So that's why I need to know where the x and the y on the circle. So what I'm going to say now, OK, x point x and tau xy is equal. And y and tau xy is going to be equal. OK, I want you to focus with me in this in a moment. When I say x tau xy, that's a point on the perimeter of the circle. And this point represents a plane. So when I say x, that means I'm talking about the x plane. OK? So I do have this plane. That plane is x. And I do have this plane. This plane is x. And as a reminder from lecture two, the reason why this is an x plane, because if this element was drawn in uh, as a cube, sigma x coming out of it. So sigma x means that's the plane x. So for this x plane, I do have a stress equal to, just read it from this plane, 9 KSI positive. So I'm going to write 9. I don't need to write KSI because that's the point. No need. What about tau xy? So tau xy, at the plane of the x, which is here and here, the shear at the x plane, what is trying, how it's trying to rotate the element. Is it a clockwise shear or counterclockwise shear? Clockwise. It's a clockwise shear. So what I want you to do, I want you to write x and write next to it clockwise. Same thing with y. Look at the y plane. I do have 5 in compression, so I'm going to write negative 5 and just read the shear in the y direction or in the, in, for the y planes. What is this shear trying to rotate the element? In which direction? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. So I'm going to write 6 CCW, which is counterclockwise. As a sanity check, you didn't need to do this, but as a sanity check, I want to calculate the 2 theta p, which is tan inverse, tau xy, sigma x minus sigma y over 2, which is tan inverse minus 6, 9 plus 5 over 2. And I'm going to get 2 theta p is equal to negative 40.6 degree. Two things here. Since the theta is negative, that means I want to rotate, or the principal stress is going to happen when you rotate the element clockwise by 2 theta p or theta p. OK? The second thing here, when you rotate the element count clockwise by theta p, and clockwise because it's negative, I want to know 
with where I did rotate the x. Did I rotate it to sigma p1 or sigma p2? How will I figure out this? As we agreed yesterday, you're going to look at the sigma x minus sigma y over 2, which is the denominator here. 9 plus 5 over 2, will that end up being positive or negative? Positive. positive. That means I'm rotating to sigma p1 or sigma p2? p1. This is a sanity check. The more circle going to tell me this. But again, as I told you before, what we are going to do in the Mohr circle, you can verify it using the manual, the manual calculation that you did yesterday. So now, in your engineering paper, I want you to draw the sigma and tau. We said that the center of the circle is neg positive 2 and 0, which is here, 2 and 0. And at the ends, I do have 11.22 and 0 and negative 7.22 and 0. Using all this information, draw the circle. And that's your Mohr circle. So now what should we do now with Mohr circle? At this point, in the question itself, I ask you to calculate the principal stresses and the shear stresses. So look at the circle. At the far ends, I do have the maximum normal stresses, which are the principal stresses. That's at the far ends from left and right. What about at the top and the bottom? At the top and the bottom, that's where I can find the maximum shear. So the maximum shear is going to happen here, right? At the top, at the furthest point at the top and the furthest point at the bottom, I'm going to find the shear. So the shear, this point, this plane, at this plane, I do have a shear equal to, if you draw it to scale, you can read it from the graph. But just for accuracy, I'm going to read it from here, 9.22. So here it's kind of close to 9.22. So I'm going to say 2 which is the sigma, and then 9.22, I'm, I'm going to say clockwise. And the reason why this is clockwise, because it's in here. And at the bottom, I do have also 2, and I'm going to say 9.22 CCW. I'm not saying negative 9.22. I'm saying 9.22 counterclockwise. Any questions so far? Tell me. Normal stresses. Normal stresses. So all these points here, or all these planes, experience tensile normal stress. All the points in the left here experience compressive normal stress. OK? OK, now let's continue. Oh. I'm going to tell it now. Okay. Now. OK. So we plotted everything except for the reference points. So the reference point I do have, for x, I do have 9 and 6 clockwise. So I'm going to go here, 9, 9, and 6. That point is here. So 9 and 6 clockwise. And that's the x point. OK? The y point is minus 5 and 6 counterclockwise. So minus 5 is here. And minus, and six, minus 6 clockwise, I don't say minus, it's 6 counterclockwise. It is here. Look how beautifully this aligned on the circle. This is going to happen if we draw kind of to scale. And it should fall in the circle because this is the x plane. This is the y plane. If I make a line between them now, this line going to pass through the centroid. So any orthogonal plane, so x and y, they were orthogonal, right? Any orthogonal plane, they're going to pass through the centroid. And what is the angle between them? You can see here, what is the angle between them? Anyone? 180. And this is actually what we did before. If I went back, uh, where? OK, I didn't mention here, but let me, let me, one minute. OK, it's OK. Let me, let me put it here. So if I have an element, 
So I do have x and I do have y. So what is the theta between x and x? It is 0, right? I didn't rotate the element. That's why the, the theta is 0. But what is the theta to the y? It's, the, it's 90 degrees. But that's 90 degree in the stress element. And the stress element, we had everything in theta, like what you saw before. When we draw the stress element here, the rotation, we didn't draw it in 2 theta. We draw it in theta. So it is 90 here, but in more circle, it is what? 180. Anyone has reasoning for this? Because it's 2 theta. Do you all agree with him? Okay. This line, this line is the x and y plane. x, y planes. And any point now, if you want to find, for example, this point, you want to rotate x or the plane of x to that point, which now I'm going to rotate it by whatever angle that's here. So as if x, y plane, that's the reference plane where I, will, I can rotate the element. Now what we are interested in, we are interested in finding the principal stresses. And the principal stress happen here. And to go from x to sigma p1, I want to rotate the x plane by how much? OK. As if I didn't, OK, that's correct. As if I didn't calculate the tan, the, this one, I, the sanity check, which is the 2 theta p. As if I didn't calculate it, it's 40.6. As if I didn't calculate it. If I want to find this theta, having this triangle, which has a height of 6, and the base is 9 minus 2, so you want to say shift or tan inverse 6 over 9 minus 2, and that's 40.6. That's 2 theta p, 40.6, which agrees to what you calculated here, 40.6. Another thing is to go from the x plane to sigma p1 plane, I want to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. What do you see? <coughs> clockwise. <coughs> is this what happened here? Yeah. OK, so that means we, we are verifying the more circle now. So let's continue with what you did yesterday. But instead of using equation, we just want to use the circle. So this is the x and y stress element. And I want to rotate the x, the x plane, for example, to the sigma plane, or the principal strain. So I'm going to rotate here by 2 theta p, which is 40.6. But in here, I'm going to write it divided by 2. And I'm going to have 203 so in this x, y coordinate, we are dealing with theta. But in the sigma tau coordinate system, we are dealing with 2 theta. So to fill, to fill this graph, I know that x, the x plane, which is 9 and 6 counterclockwise, which is what you see here, this x plane, 9 and 6 counterclockwise, it's going to rotate to this plane. And this plane has a sigma 1 stress, which is 11.11. And 11.11 was in tension. So I'm going to write 11.11. And this 11.11 was sigma p1. OK? Tell me. OK, yeah. Because this point falls in the positive stress region. OK? OK. And this plane. What is the shear for that plane? It is zero. That's why I don't need to put any shear stresses here, which also agrees to what we did before. The principal stresses doesn't have shear. OK. Now, that's if we rotated the x. We, we need to fill up this graph. So we, we have the x for that, the x faces for the rotated element. I do have the y faces. How will I find the y faces? I will basically rotate the y point to sigma p2. And I have this theta, 
which is equal to that theta from the property of, I don't know, math. So 40.6. So the Y face, it went from negative 5 in compression to negative 7.22 in compression. So I'm going to fill this graph by saying 7.22, 7.22. I don't have a shear. And this is the P element. Is that clear? OK. Now, the shear element. So the shear element now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw a vertical line here. Because if the horizontal line, I don't want to say horizontal line anymore. I want to say that this line represents the principal <coughs> planes. Because the principal plane has sigma p1 and has sigma p2, and they are both orthogonal. OK? Therefore, the vertical line here is going to represent the maximum in-plane shear plane, which tells you that I have 2 and 9.22 here, 2.922 here, two orthogonal planes has the maximum shear. So now I want to draw them here. To do so, this is the x, which is the x-plane, right? If I want to find the x-plane for the maximum shear, so I need to rotate this element, this point, or this plane, by how much? OK, 45 minus, if we are speaking about theta p. But look in here. What is now the relation between the maximum shear and the maximum principle? It's 90 here. But you are right. In the x and y coordinate, it should be 45. Because again, we are here dealing with 2 theta. Tell me. I said 49. You said 49. Oh, my bad. OK, my bad. I'm so sorry. But you see that they are 90 degree distance. So, Rotation, so I'm gonna say 40, 90 minus 40.6, which is 49.4, which is 49.4, and that's 2 theta s. So let's fill up the graph. So the x went from 9 and 6 clockwise to 2 in tension, so I'm gonna put 2 in here. And what was the shear? 9.22 clockwise in that plane. So where is the clockwise? It is like this, right? And if I know one shear, I can do the other. Bless you. So here is two. So now we did the x plane. What about the y plane? To go from the y plane to the shear, also we're going to need to rotate by 49.4. Why? Anyone? No. Math. OK. So I want to rotate from the plane that has negative 5 and counterclockwise shear. I'm going to 2, which is now 2 here in tension, to 9.22 counterclockwise. How is the counterclockwise going to be? It's going to be like this. Right? And the shear now is 9.22. Does this agree with what we did before? Yeah. At the maximum shear element, we do have sigma average everywhere. And that's the 2. Is the 2 is sigma average? Yeah. Sigma average here was 2. So this whole verifies with all what we did before. Is that clear? OK, cool. Let's do another problem. And you can notice, I filled up everything here. But you can notice, and you can do this for your cheat sheet. You can basically copy all these steps and just leave blank the answers, because this is going to change from each, each problem. But these steps are going to be the same for all these kind of problems. Because again, these are steps that you're going to use to draw the circle. So what I want, the reason why I only left the reference point that I want to practice how can we write the reference point. 
So can anyone tell me what is the reference point for this element? So let's start with x. So x is what? Negative 60 and what? 27. Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. What about the y? 12 and then what? 27 clockwise. Okay. Now here is the circle. I should have drawn the line just to save time, but it's okay. Let's, let's draw the x and y together. So now you notice that the x, where, where the x happened? Negative 60 and 27 counterclockwise. Where is negative 60? Is here. And 27 counterclockwise, it's going to be, it's supposed to be here. It's supposed to be on the circle. I don't want you, any of you, even, even though if you draw the circle wrong, you just cheat on me and put the point on the circle, although like it might be away, just to make sure that I know that you understood what's going on, okay? So now the x now was here, which was negative 60 and 27 CCW. And the y gonna be 12, 27 clockwise. So 12, 27, I think it's, it should be here. It should be here. You all agree with me, right? Yes. Yeah, thank you. So this should be 27. Notice that this is different than what, that the first problem. The first one, we had the x here and y here. Now we had it shifted. So once you know where's the x and y, draw a, li draw a line. And although it didn't align on the center, so what should you do? Just move the center here. OK? <laughs> Theoretically, it should, it, should, it should go to the circle because they are orthogonal. Okay, just show me that you understand the concept. Okay, now I'm, I want to draw the vertical, the vertical shear element. So I have, this is the xy. This is the principle. And here's the shear. Okay? So what I want to do now I want to show you something, which is the sanity check. I calculated the tan two theta p. I found that the two theta p was negative. Negative means clockwise. But notice the x minus y over two. It was it was negative. Negative means we are rotating to sigma p two. It's not sigma p one anymore. Does that align with what happened in the circle? Yes. If I want to rotate this element to the principle, did I rotate to the sigma p one now or sigma p two? P2. And again, sigma P, which is here and here, the 2 theta P, is the, is the rotation from the XY plane to the principal plane. Okay? So let's, let's fill this graph. So I know that this is theta P is going to be here. And I know this is P. And this, of course, is going to be S now. This is theta S. So the P, I'm moving from X equals 60 in compression to 69 in compression. So I know now this is 69 in compression. And this was sigma P2. Okay? This was X. What about Y? So Y moved from 12 in tension to 21 in tension. So I'm going to put 21 in here. And I'm done with the principal stresses element. Let's go to the shear element. So now I'm going to rotate here to the shear. This is going to be 2 theta s. And x went from negative 60 to, I didn't write it down, but I can write it down as negative 24. And the maximum shear is 45. This one, I didn't cheat on you. It's, it is actually on 45, OK? And I'm going to write CCW. Same as here is negative 24 and 45 CW, OK? So to rotate this element, x, I went from 27 counterclockwise. So I have 27, which rotate counterclockwise, to 45 counterclockwise. 
So I'm gonna put here 24, 24 in compression, and then I do have a counterclockwise. How counterclockwise is gonna be up? And this is gonna be 45. And you can basically just continue drawing the shear because you know how it's gonna be. And this is 24. And here is your element. Is that clear? Any questions? Another application for more circle is that I give you an element and I'll tell you what is the element that's gonna result when you rotate the element by theta equal 58 degree and the 58 degree here is gonna be counterclockwise. Same steps, just copy and paste what we did before. Same steps, numbers gonna be different. This time I did the X and Y reference point for you. And, oh my God, I should have, I should have wrote so, oh man. I should have made the line, but okay, let's do it again. But you understood, understood like the whole concept thing. Okay, so the X and Y gonna be 16 and 50. So, is it 16? Bless you. Oh, man. Yeah, okay, 16 and 50 gonna be here. Okay, 16 and 50. And this is X. I know, I know. So just make the point a little big. And then 42 and 50 counterclockwise. So 42 and 42 and 50, it's going to be, it's supposed to be 42 and 50. Let's put here. Y, 42 and 50. Make a line between them. Should pass through the centroid and it did pass. Okay. So what is the question? The question asks us, I want you to find the stress when you rotate the element by 58. So we rotated an XY coordinate by 58. So in more circle, I want to rotate it by 58 times 2. So I'm going to rotate it by 116. And I'm going to rotate it counterclockwise. So counterclockwise here like this. So I'm going to rotate the XY element counterclockwise by 116 degree. If I know that this angle, this is theta P, 2 theta p, this was equal to 75.42. So I want to rotate a total of 116. So 116 minus 75.42. So I'm going to end up somewhere here by 40 degrees more, 58. So the point should be somewhere here. Do you all see it? I want to rotate by 116. So I wanted to find what is left here. And to find what's left here, that's 2 theta p. So if from here to here, 75, so I need to do an extra 40 more just to go to this plane. And this plane is the n and t that I want to find. Okay? How will I find the stresses at those planes? Oh, I'm, run I'm running out of time. Can you give me two minutes? Okay. What you know, that you know that the radius for this circle is 50. So what I want you to do, I want you to make a triangle here, this triangle, and take this triangle out, okay? If you know that this triangle is 50 in radius, and you know that this angle is 40.58, which is what we had here, 40.58, can you get this vertical distance? Yeah, you can simply say 50 sine theta, which is 40.58, and the horizontal is 50 cosine 40.58. And if you did so, you're going to find that the horizontal, the horizontal dimension here is 39.23. Vertical dimension is going to be, it should be 33.6. So I know at this point, I do have 33.6 clockwise. And I do have a horizontal, this horizontal distance was equal to 39, but should I put here 39? No, I should add a cent like the center, the A, which is 
not the eight. I should add this this distance to that dimension. I found that this is 39. To find this coordinates, I need to add this distance, which is 39, to 29. Do you all see it? And you're going to end up having 68.23. Do the same thing here, but you don't need to do the triangle because the triangle is going to be the same. So you're going to go down by a shear equal 33.6, and this horizontal distance is going to be 39. So basically what I want you to do, you add once 29 to the 39, and you subtract 29 to the 39. If you subtract the 39, so this distance is 39. If you subtract the 29, you're going to go to that point, which is going to be negative 10.23 and 33.6. Any questions? Okay, once you found those points, you basically draw this element. So this element, we went from x equal 16, we went from x equal 16 to x equal to negative 10. So I'm gonna put negative 10 here. And we went from shear 50 clockwise to shear equal to 33.6 counterclockwise. So I filled this one. Do this thing in the Y, and you're going to find eventually that this T is going to be equal to 68.24, and the shear is going to be this way. Is that clear how to use more circle? Okay, we're going to practice this tomorrow. And if you have questions, just come and ask me.